Hello, I'm Gary. This is Claudia. This is Standing Half Moon. Toes and heels together, thighs are active, working your mula and your uddiyana bandha. So lifting pubic bone to navel, engaging the abdominals a little bit. Inhale the arms over the head, interlace the fingers, extend the index fingers, cross the thumbs. So let's bring the wrists nice and straight, please. There it is. So this tight grip is a big deal. Squeezing the arms together from the elbows like a nut in an old-fashioned nutcracker, squeezing that to the biceps. Bringing the weight back in the heels, push the thighs forward and come down to the right and to the left several times. So we're pressing the hips and thighs forward, bringing the chin up, bringing the arms back, creating a nice opening sensation. And just side to side, no twisting like you're sliding on a wall here. And then come back to the center position. Every time in the center position, it's the same dialogue for me. Bring the chin up, bring the arms back so the biceps are behind the ears. We're going to stretch up and glue the palms. Every time we've got to really establish this nice base. The weight should be in the heels. Pull with the right arm and press your hips out to the left. Keeping the right shoulder forward and the left hip forward. It's like the body's flat on a wall. Continuing to open. So it's not just leaning down to the side. There's this tucking the right shoulder under to lift the left shoulder under. Lifting through the right middle rib cage to lift the left middle rib cage. So you really want to get this expansive quality of prana happening as you're lifting through the left middle rib cage. No 70-30 breathing in the standing series. That's for floor series. So it's just a nice relaxed breath right now. Traditionally, this would be a one-minute hold in one set. 30 second hold in the second set. Pushing through the heel, pushing the IT bat out. It's important to feel this nice stretch all down the left side of the body. And then come back up to a center position. Every time in the center position, chin up, arms back, stretch up and glue the palms together. Nice tight grip and pull with the left arm, press your hips out to the right. She loves it when I do that, trust me. Left shoulder forward, right hip forward, pushing through the right heel. Again, Claudia's pushing her hips forward and thighs forward as she brings the chin up and arms back and lifting through the thank you, lifting the left middle rib cage to lift the right middle rib cage. So again, the feeling to me is that I'm lifting my left rib cage, tucking my left shoulder under a little bit as I lift the right. So opening, not just leaning down. Locking the left arm out to lock the right arm out. The feeling is that you're pulling the entire right side of the body long. So there's a nice bow-type tension. I want the skin to feel tight all down the right side of the body. As you push the hip out, push through the heel, push the middle ribs out, we get a crescent moon shape or a half moon shape. And come back up lifted, long and strong. Drop the head back easily as if it's on a hinge. If you need to shake it out a little bit, that's all right. I'm not really a big fan of shaking the neck out here. Be careful if you need to. Lift through the thighs. This is not part of Bikram Dialogue. Active thighs are huge support of the sacrum and backward bending. So thighs active, draw the low abs and create an airbag effect. Look back as far as you can, then bring the body back as far as you can. Thighs lifted is a big deal here. And then bring the arms back, all the way back. Bring the biceps back with the ears. Go ahead and point back at the switch. All the way back, lifted through the chest, biceps with the ears. So you're pointing at what you're gazing at right now. Breathe. You've got to breathe, even if it's little sips of breath. Nice. And lift through the chest. Come back up. That's nice back bending. So take a moment here. Inhale, stretch up, lock the arms up. So chin up, arms back here. Get a good tight grip. And hinge at the hips and fold flat back, arms with the ears, bend the knees. So the dialogue does say bend the knees here. Beautiful. All the way to the floor, flat back. Thank you. Well, you got to do that in class now, too. And then walk it out, squat it out. Now that I know you can do it. This is a big deal integration series. The first few postures of the sequence are integration series. They're not even really warm-up postures. So just taking a moment here, releasing the hips, the sacrum, hamstrings. How do you feel? Where do you feel good? Where do you maybe need a little attention today? And then bend the knees as much as necessary. Torso to thigh contact, cup the heels from behind, work the forearms as far behind the calves if you can. Otherwise, grab as low as you can on your shins or ankles. Tuck the chin under the knees and lift the hips up, pull the forehead under the shins. Just a little trick, tucking the chin under the knees sticks your torso on the thighs. And touch the forehead into the shins if you can. If you can't, try right, but really do try right. The di dialogue has no ambiguity in it. It says touch your forehead to your shins. Pull straight up on the heels. And for Cloudy, with her legs fairly straight right now, the weight should be forward more in the balls of the feet. So pushing through the big toes. I've fallen out of this posture with a pop several times practicing this yoga. And release arms with ears, chin away from chest. So set it up nice flat back. Inhale, come up flat back. Perfect. Exhale your arms to your side. And this is a big deal. Standing pose. We want to release the posture, opening up energy channels, nadis in the body, and letting prana move smoothly through these energy channels right now. This is where all the benefit comes from. So the face is soft, jaws relaxed, body's nice and relaxed.